I think the president will fade away a lot faster than he wants to. There is no future uh, with Trumpism. There were plenty of Republicans that outperformed Donald Trump at the ballot box. And so we should be looking you know, forward, not looking back. There are less and less people that would consider themselves Trump Republicans, you know, as the emotion wears off. Um, so I think in six months, it's not going to be necessarily the party of, of Donald Trump. I think Adam means fewer and fewer people. It's a common mistake. Well, if you only watch CNN, you might think those voices are representative of the GOP post-Trump. But what's the real truth? Well, in the latest NBC News poll, 87% of Republicans approved of Trump. Virtually unchanged, NBC had to admit, from right before the election. Now, the same number oppose impeachment, according to a new Monmouth poll. So it seems that, despite what you just heard, uh, Trump's America First does have a future. One GOP voters seem to like, at least the policies. Here with her perspective on things, Nikki Haley, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. and founder of Save America PAC. All right, Ambassador Haley, thanks for being here tonight. Where do you see um, the Republican Party going as the months and years uh, move forward? And do you see yourself having a part in it? Well, I think the Republican Party should continue to be the party of solutions. That's what we've always been. We, When it comes to policies, when it comes to anything that brings about economic freedom and opportunities for people, that's who we are. And I think, you know, it's funny for everyone trying to determine where the party goes, we should not want to go back to the Republican Party before Trump. We gained a lot of people that were unheard, unseen, many of whom, like I grew up in South Carolina, had just been misunderstood. We want to keep them in the party. But the reality is we lost a lot of women and we lost a lot of college educated. We want to bring them in and we want to expand the tent. But the way we expand the tent is by going back to what has always made us the stronger party, that we believe in freedom of speech, we believe in freedom of religion, we believe that every person has an opportunity if they're given the tools to do it. And what you're seeing the Democratic Party do now is they've now gone to where they're the party of censorship and they're the party of government control. And this is going to be a real opportunity for us to See what we've been dealt, which is a tough hand. We don't have the White House. We don't have the Senate. We don't have the House. Um, but we can't be quiet about it. 2022 is right around the corner. We have to start getting focused on how we're going to win the House back, how we're going to win the Senate back, and how we're going to pick up governor seats. And, that, and I think we do it. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we, we, we did really well in the state legislatures, which is a great sign. Obviously picked up a number right. of seats in the House. You also said that you thought the president, President Trump, would be judged harshly because of what happened at the Capitol. I'm not sure most Republican voters agree with you on that. Would you like to expand on why you think that uh, moving forward? Yeah, January 6th was a tough day. And, and honestly, the, the actions the president had since Election Day were not his finest. And for me, it troubles me greatly because... I'm really proud of the successes of the Trump administration. Whether it was foreign policy or domestic policy, we should embrace those. Those were the right policies. That's what our party cares about. That's what we were looking to do. I mean, just if you look at the foreign policy side, the strength that we were able to show as America was something that's really important. The actions of the president post-January 6th weren't uh, post-election day were not great. What happened on January 6th was not great. Does he deserve to be impeached? Absolutely not. It's so you'd a vote against game impeachment. That yeah, you'd vote against absolutely. impeachment. Absolutely. So that's where you would part ways. They're trying to just kick you, you him out part, the door. You would part ways with, uh, for instance, Mitt Romney, who will be voting, it sounds like, for impeachment, for, for to, to convict. Well, At least it sounds that way. I don't even think there's a basis for impeachment. I mean, the idea that they're even bringing this up, they didn't even have a hearing in the House. Now they're going to turn around and bring about impeachment, yet they say they're for unity. I mean, they, they beat him up before he got into office. They're beating him up after he leaves office. I mean, at some point, I mean, give the man a break. I mean, move on. If you truly are about moving on, move on. The idea that they're going to do impeachment, that's not going to bring our country together. That's only dividing our country. When will you make a decision about 2024? Nobody wants to think about another presidential election. I think everybody wants to think about what we're going to do now. If you look at just the day since Biden has started, 
He's trying to see how many executive orders he can sign. But there's no strategy. There's no vision to it. He's going to jump and get into the World Health Organization again. But you're not going to have a Security Council meeting asking China to what they knew, when they knew, how they did it. He's going to jump into the Paris Climate Agreement. But you're not going to go and ask India and China before you get in to come back and make sure they slow their emissions now and not 10 years from now. You're letting Iranian nuclear weapons get produced and you're going to jump back into the Iran deal without using those sanctions as leverage. And God forbid you're going to get back into the awful Human Rights Council without ever holding yeah. them accountable on their political It's all going to happen. Like every, yeah, it's all going to happen. Elections have consequences. Doing. Yeah. Elections all have consequences. And he's all about the numbers of the transactions. But what he's doing is he's showing us to have a very weak hand to the world. And I don't know that that's... I mean, literally, Russia and China are very happy right now. If you end fracking, the one thing we had against Russia was they hated that we were energy independent. To ban fracking and not even talk to these governors about the thousands of families that are going to lose their jobs. Oh, it's a nightmare. That's not what you do. That's not a president that's about unifying. That's about a president that wants to hurt the Republican Party and continue to kick us. We have to stand up and we have to continue to fight. Ambassador Haley, come back soon. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Great to see you.